everyone, and welcome back to another episode of The Royal Family. So y'all just saw the machinima. Zayori is not getting along with Lord Taisu. So we're going to beat them all in a sec, I feel like. <laughs> Hold on, let me go in here. We've got some people who are enraged. Okay, Araminta, wait, what is... Emotional melt... Wait, 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 is she having the emotional meltdown? Okay, Araminta was just angry from witnessing inappropriate behavior from watching her daughter punch this kid. Oh, he's mopping now. Okay, maybe that's like him being like, sorry for what I asked. I didn't mean it. I didn't know she was gonna punch me. They're literally like, he was also angry just a second ago. Nope. From scary face being... <gasps> what if Zayori made a scary face? What if she was like so intimidating and now he's like, ugh. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, the, the parents are definitely getting along. Let's pretend that the staff, they're steeping some tea. I love this thing so, so much. Oh, and now he's trying to flirt with Araminta. Okay, well, we have an important thing going on here. Zayori is in a rage. Anger bomb, aggravating conversation, angry <laughs> <laughs> I believe in me from confidence game. She has come back from Han's family's place. Like she was there as we saw for months in the last episode, we did see them there visiting, but now a few months has passed. I posted some pictures of her trading with Akio and I just feel like he's really taught her to stand up for herself. But now it's like, maybe she took it the wrong way and now anything. Like Taisu was just asking, honestly, a simple question. He's a kid. He's curious. And Zayori's also a kid. Again, this isn't like, you know, it's The Sims. We don't need to think too much into it, but Zayori did snap. <laughs> and Araminta freaked out. Han was not ready for it either. Are you steeping the tea? Is it already clean tea set? Pour tea. Cool. Oh, oh, that's so cool. Serve tea too. What? Wait, have I, have I tried this? I, I feel like I have. Oh, he's just, oh! Oh my god, Zayori's like, stop giving dad tea! Make them go away! I don't want to be here! <laughs> Look, she's freaking out! Oh my god, Araminta was not happy with her. Zayori's feeling confident now. The, the anger seems to already... <gasps> called out, though! From being confronted by a loyal sim, Princess Zayori got called out for her mean behavior towards a sim. Shame on her. Oh my god, this is perfect. Araminta clearly already reprimanded them. I feel like she didn't want them to leave just, like, quite yet. Is he? Why are you just mopping their entire palace? You don't have to do. Man, he's a responsible little fella, isn't he? Okay. Okay. So not just me. Chan. I, I'm trying to get her to come back here. I feel like you know she yelled at her son for say like being kind of rude to Zayori. Even though he's a kid, I feel like he didn't really know what he was asking. But and then again, Zayori was just prepared for. I think Zayori took it as like it's something she's sensitive about, and of course she's a kid, so you know. She'll learn to maybe control her emotions a bit better, but we shall see because I feel like teenage her might be very difficult. So we will see. Um, Taesu, oh my god, boy, you are still mopping. Come back. You don't, you really, you don't need to mop. Oh, uncomfortable from filthy surroundings. <laughs> I guess I need to clean the palace. All right, so now they have like a little bit of a negative relationship. Yell at apologize. I feel like Araminta would make her apologize and I also feel like Taehyung, specifically his mom, Michan, would definitely make him apologize too. Where did the apologize thing go? Is the only thing she can do ask to leave? I don't think she wants them here. Call names. Where did the apologize thing go? Silly behavior. Huh. I don't know. I just feel like she doesn't like it. <laughs> well, let me at least have you introduce yourself. Okay, you, you, you met their parents. Okay, you do you have a little bit of a relationship with them. And I, I feel like Araminta and Han had already met them before. I kind of feel like they already talked to the Duke and Duchess. They wanted to have like their little conversation first before introducing their kids. So they've already talked to them a bit and this was Zayori's first time meeting them To Oh wait, okay, Araminta, you do need to introduce yourself to the Duke consort. Respectful introduction. Now, do you know their son? Why does he keep l literally, he keeps mopping even though I keep telling him not to. Boy, come back. Okay. He does also have a sister. When is an appropriate behavior? That was it. There is a time and a place for everything, but it is abhorrent to display such behavior in front of a proper sim. I don't think Aramid is happy. <laughs> Han's just feeling inspired. I feel like he's blaming Akio for this. Like he's just, I mean, he was like, I want to kill Akio because 
he knows that I just I feel like he thinks Akio has something to do with this and now he kind of is regretting sending Zayori over there. I feel like this is such a complicated situation because Zayori did learn to stand up for herself and she's got I think a lot oh they're flirting with each other that's so sweet um but I think she has a lot more confidence than she does before she left but Han and Aramita are not happy with her behavior and her attitude either. So this is definitely something oh she's talking so much to Hey, Sue Swab, this is actually very cute. I, I kind of love this. She's feeling confident. Make fun of Moo, no. Friendly, small talk, get to know. What are your feeling? Festering bitterness from feeling feeling bitter about someone nearby. That's definitely Taesu. This was not a good like a good a good first meeting at all. Stressed with strangers, feeling hurt and called out. Yes, we saw that one. Um, but we are definitely going to explore more. So this episode is kind of short, if you can already tell, at least shorter than my previous ones. But this is the second to last episode of season two. Next episode is going to be the finale of season two and then we'll get into season three. We're gonna do a pretty big time skip. I'll talk about it later. The thing is, it's not gonna match up with like everyone. Zyori and her sisters are just all supposed to be teenagers. So we'll see that in the next season and then we'll kind of explore Zyori's relationships with her family members a bit more, especially her and her mother, Araminta. So we'll definitely see how that goes in the future. For now, I just think this is interesting that she's talking so much with Taesu's mother, um, but she does not like him at all. Um, and yes, again, so he has a sister who we will meet eventually too, um, but she is going to be the future betrothed for Kato, which is Zayori's cousin and Akio's oldest son. So we'll see how that goes. I think, uh, I mean, she only just knows the Duke consort, but barely. I don't think he's that talkative of a person, honestly. Uh, I should really get going. Okay, I guess they're about to leave. I was so tempted because I think this is a new thing within the past few years, but the kids can fight each other now. So should we just do it so it's in the system. <laughs> she just punched him once, but does that count as a fight? I don't know. I don't think it's like a full on fight. Okay. Well, Sayori's done here. Um, so now, I mean, this is obviously a conversation for Aramid and Hod to have. Definitely like when they leave, they could have like set them up to be betrothed to each other. But because of this, they're like, well, clearly they don't get along. Maybe we should just back out from this idea. Oh, yeah. Now he's leaving too. Okay. I think just the entire family is leaving now. But yeah, now they're like, um, maybe we shouldn't have done this. <laughs> maybe she's too young. Maybe they just don't get along. I don't think they want to force her with anyone that she doesn't want to be with because like when they were first getting together, they were not fans of the idea, but they knew that they got lucky and it, things just worked out for them, for, for Han and Araminta. Um, but that doesn't happen to everyone. And although I think that Araminta is definitely not obsessive about shaping Zayori's future, but like it's important to her and she wants to make sure she's like thinking ahead for the future. I don't think that she would force, force her into a, an arranged marriage or to be betrothed to someone that she doesn't want to be or that she could clearly hates and then she also punched. <laughs> so they're like, okay, we could either try to find someone else or just give this a break because maybe Zayori shouldn't be meeting anyone right now if she's got, if she's doing this kind of behavior. Okay, so now that they've left, I feel like Araminta might punish Sayori. And I feel like her and Han are gonna have a conversation with her. It's like the whole point of your uncle teaching you all this stuff was not for you to use it outside of practicing martial arts, unless it's like self-defense. But they're like, you can't. Hold on, let me, okay, let's see. Discipline recent behavior. Ooh, what type of per, okay, calm, firm, strict, or punish. Give time out for arguing. Give time out for being mean. Ground for, I feel like that Araminta might ground her. I think, oh my God, she looked, oh. This is so weird to do. Oh, ground. No TV, no computer, no leaving the house, no friends, no phone, no music, no toys or games. Can I pick all of them? 
Oh, oh, I, okay, well, I guess I just picked TV. No TV. Teach about responsibility. Okay, so she's punished her, and now she's lecturing her. Although she seems pretty calm about it. Is, is Zayori for this? Can you still discipline? Give time out for arguing, ground for arguing. Okay, well, we'll do more than just the TV. How about that? No computer, no leaving the house, no friends, no phone. No, I mean, did she even use her phone? No toys or games, okay? And then Zyra, do you have any mood? Oh, it, it looks like a jail. Grounded, no TV. I have been grounded and can't use the TV, and then I've been grounded and I can't play with any toys or games. What happens if she just does? Learning from mistakes. Ooh, from losing confidence. The best way to learn is through mistakes. Next time, Zyori is going to succeed. What a great lesson of in growth mindset. Okay, so now she's learning the lesson. I can't use violin. <laughs> okay, let's go here and vent and talk to your sisters more because I know we haven't really gotten to see Rin and Mamie much. Can you vent to them? Now now they're like, tell us everything. How did it go? Are you going to marry this boy? Like, what's going on? They're so curious. Um, Complaints. Complain about pro- complain about parents and then complain about problems. Oh my gosh, though, I can have them do pranks to each other. Would they do a lot of pranks? Tease about face. Trick with hand buzzer. Oh my gosh, Zyori's already tense. If she's about to trick- <gasps> ah! That is- is she laughing? Did she like that? She immediately went back to the glare. I guess she did like it. I'm really excited for you all to see them when they grow up. Zayori, and, or sorry, Rin and Mamie, I think are going to be like getting into other extracurricular activities too. I wish there were more mods for the kids because I also think we've seen Zayori like dance in one of my previous Lunar New Year posts. And then um, I think I mentioned that she, I wanted her to do like gymnastics and stuff. I feel like Mamie might be more into the gymnastics and Rin might be more into the martial arts. And then Zayori, I guess just does both. Oh my God, okay. So yeah, they're they're just chatting now. Zyori's like, I'm I'm grounded now too, so you guys have to hang out with me because otherwise I'm gonna be super bored. <laughs> but yeah, I think we'll go ahead and move on to the Oasis Springs royal family now. All right, we are now at the Oasis Springs Palace, but we did talk in the last episode. Why is Sahar sad? From the dollhouse. Oh, poor dolls from Broken Dollhouse. Hey, Gabriel, can you fix that dollhouse? Please repair. Cause Sahar's sad about it. Poor thing. Story time. Wait, okay, hold on. We're about to have guests over though. Um, So we are going to invite some people over. We're gonna have a dinner party. Okay, so the dinner party has started. We talked about this in the last episode. I, I do need to talk about this later a bit more too, but Arya fought for Sahar to be her heir, so he has a place in line for the throne, and Naya said that she thinks the only way that it might work is if Sahar marries somebody who is of the Oasis Springs royal bloodline, and they had to pick somebody because they didn't want them to be, like, too close to the point where it was weird, uh, because they're starting to grow out of that time. Now, you guys will see who they chose. So so this is Baroness Journey. She is the wife of Baron Maxwell, who should be coming up any minute now. Maxwell, funnily enough, used to have a thing with Arya's sister, Aisha. That did not go well. <laughs> I don't even think dating counts. They were like hooking up and then he was also dating her cousin at the time, Rosalind, and you know, things just didn't go well. But then Maxwell moved on, he grew up, he went to university with Charles, they were roommates, and then they, he met Baroness Journey there, or he met Journey there, and they got married. So they have two daughters. They have Lady Colette, and they have Lady Giselle. Lady Giselle is Sahar's age, um, so this is who they thought would be maybe the best option. They wanna meet, they wanna talk about it, they gotta see if Maxwell and Journey are on board with this. I feel like, if anything, Journey is like, I don't know how I feel about this. This feels weird. Like, what if she doesn't wanna get married to Sahar when she grows up? Like, that's, I don't know. So Maxwell just said that we'll, we're just talking about it today. Kind of the whole situation with Araminta and Han and Diori. They're, they're just like, we just want to talk. We want to see how this goes. Like, 
this is kind of the situation. So if you're on board, then we'll we'll talk about it more later. But this is it's a it's a consultation, if you will. <laughs> um, again, them being royals kind of raises the stakes a bit and it makes us do some things that we're not used to. But that's just kind of how their life and everything is. So let's see. We're going to. Why don't we all just sit and talk in like the living room? Can we do that? Same thing with you and Naya also, and then Sahar should be down here too. Wait, Journey came in to talk to Sahar and Colette is I feel like Colette's just here. She probably didn't need to come here. She's definitely older than Sahar is. Oh, no, no, no. Put, uh, oh, oh, Naya hugged Maxwell. She's like, I remember you. <laughs> I had to yell at you and my daughter. I remember that now. Okay, so they're, they're coming in to chat and also okay i know a lot was covered up by amira's death in this episode but three episodes ago the one where amira died in this palace sahar actually already knows giselle because that was the toddler where i was like oh my gosh are they dancing together and then he started singing to her and then they started yelling at each other and then giselle bit him <laughs> so they already know each other they have a little toddler history they're toddlers i don't think they're gonna remember that at all he's struggling can somebody help him somebody help this child so they do already know each other this is mostly a talk with the parents. Okay, so they're all sitting for dinner. So really quickly, I just want to talk about something. Um, so in the last Royal Family episode, I guess the best way to put it is I felt like there was a lot of red flags in comments. Um, and obviously I know that I, I tell you guys, I'm like, like, let me know like what you think in the description below or in the comments below. So um, you guys are just doing exactly what I said. So I don't want this to feel like I'm attacking anyone. I just want this, I want to bring some some stuff to people's attention um because i have some things i want to talk about for sahar's story which we're i'm just about to talk about now there's also some things i want to talk about with alice may um from the comments but we're not seeing alice may in this episode we'll see her in the next episode for her coronation um so i'll wait to talk about that then i think the best way to sum this up is sahar's not adopted for drama and the comments in the last video made me worry about going too detailed into sahar's story um so a lot of people are saying that like he shouldn't be the heir because he's adopted and that the town, the people, that's going to cause so much drama and they're going to be furious and they're not going to want that and this is a horrible idea and, and people saying that Arya is being selfish and um, just all this stuff. It, 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 it was a little uncomfortable to read, I guess is the best way to put it. I think I mentioned this in the last episode too, but I do want to focus on more of his relationship with his mother. Anything more than that, it feels like he's being exploited a bit and I'm not adopted, so I don't want to do that. I feel like the only one that should tell that kind of story with that much detail would be an adoptee. But I like what someone else said though, is that, you know, it might, it might cause uh, some issues, but that they don't think that means that we shouldn't do it. There's also like a lot of people pitting Priya and Sahar against each other, which I'm not a fan of. It's The Sims. It's not. I, I mean this like in the best way possible, but it's, it's not that serious. I know we just got out of a really detailed story. I know we just got out of a story where the people's opinions mattered with, with um, not Sahar, sorry, with Alice May's story. So like, I don't blame you guys for thinking that at all, but the people's opinion is not going to come up properly probably in a lot of storylines, including this one. Um, I also have Oasis Springs as an absolute monarchy. Technically, Naya has all the say in this. She doesn't need to run it by any government officials or anything like that. Also, there was a previous king of Sweden who was adopted like years and years ago. So there's been adopted royals in the past. I don't know if you all have seen live action Little Mermaid, but Prince Eric was adopted and he was supposed to take the throne. So if Disney can do it, I can do it too. I just ask you guys to be a bit more careful about what you're saying because this world it's meant to be an escapism for you guys it's meant to be i mean it's my escapism too i love this world and i know things aren't completely realistic but again it's escapism we've already seen that people of different races this is a place that they can escape to people of different sexualities this is a place they can escape to people of different like backgrounds all this stuff this is a place that they can escape to so just let the adoptees escape too okay they have to deal with enough already and I, again, feel like the comments kind of just proves that. And if you want more information about this stuff, I'm going to link my friend Kira's channel below. She just did a speech at an adoptee convention, and I think it 
really summarizes. I mean, there's way there's way more to it. Everyone's story is different, but it just I think it's important to hear another adoptee's thoughts. So I'm I'm gonna link that below for anybody who would like to check it out. But yeah, that's all pretty much I wanted to say about that. Again, please just be mindful. We're going to go ahead and and do this storyline. Sahar is most likely going to be in line for the throne. You never know. He might change his mind in the future. But if these are the circumstances right now, then that's what we're gonna go with. Um, and also please don't pit him and Priya against each other. There's people who just want Priya to be queen and don't and just getting really aggressive about it. So please don't. I, I don't want this community to be toxic. That's all I wanted to say about that. And again, I have more I want to say uh, about the comments about Alice Bay in the last episode, but since we're not seeing her, I will wait to do that in the next episode. Okay, so the only one missing here I think is Giselle. Where did she go? I, well, I mean, I, I definitely want... You guys should know each other. Okay, you just introduced yourself. You don't know Journey, so we're going to do a polite introduction. And then Gabriel, you need to come sit here too. Do you know Maxwell? You don't. Okay, we're gonna have you introduce yourself. Oh, there's Giselle. Okay, y'all have no idea what's going on. I'm so sorry for this. Hit. Why is that the first option? Friendly, interest, talk about favorite color, affection, hug, activities, watch, babble. Babble to each other. Other. All right, and then Gabriel, do you know? Just introduce yourself to Colette. Might as well. She's here. She's like, why am I here? <laughs> because Taysu's sister didn't have to go with them. Not that she knows that, but I wonder if Journey and Arya would be the type to get along. I don't know. We'd have to see. And then Sahar and Giselle are just babbling to each other. They're really cute. Let's see. Sing a song. Sing a song to her again. The next time we see them, they will be children. I still want them to be able to like live their lives. I feel like it's one of those situ- well I guess we didn't have of like that much of them living their lives but for the- oh wait that was so cute! Um but for those who saw early season one and Alice and Henry I believe they were kids when the whole arrangement was talked about for them. So they kind of just always knew they would end up like that's that they- end up together. But we're gonna have to see because it's like, well, when they grow up, are they going to want to date other people? Are they allowed to do that? Like, what is, like, are they even gonna like each other? I think is one of the main things too. So we'll have to see how that works. Oh my gosh, now they're suddenly yelling at each other and Sahar is crying. Oh my God, look how defiant. <gasps> Just, oh. Y'all, her freaking face, and Zahar's crying. If this is what they're like as teenage, I know them like being toddlers, just we have no idea what they're gonna be like, but if this is what they're gonna be like as teenagers, this is going to be a roller coaster. This might actually be so, so interesting. <laughs> and now she's babbling to him. They're just babbling to each other now. Oh my goodness. Ooh, worry about, <gasps> talk about deceit. Partner! Oh my god! Maybe Maxwell has a memory of Philip, like when he used to come here or something, and now is talking to Naya about it. Oh my gosh! <gasps> I wonder what Philip would have to say about this entire situation. I mean, him and Naya were betrothed to each other as children, I believe. I don't know. I, I feel like he'd kind of be for this, but I did kind of forget how to bring up the arranged marriage thing. They might be too young. Oh my god. I still can't believe that's an option. Oh, arrange future. Okay, so they do, they have to be kids. Noted. So, in season three, we will make it official with them as kids. The fact that she can arrange marriages for- Oh! Also, by the way, so some of the comments were saying, like, if the people will think that if Sahara can become king, then anyone can become king. And then Adrian's illegitimate children will become, like, they'll want to take the throne. Most of them are dead. So that's not gonna happen. I think the only one alive is Lady Cassidy and she has no clue. So that's not going to happen. Just a heads up. Pri Ooh, a future arranged marriage for Priya. She'll still like be a kid in the next season. This is why, so like, it's gonna be a big time skip to where Zayori and them become teenagers. Oh wait, I guess some of them would be teenagers because isn't Mamie the same age as Cambridge and Felix in the, oh my gosh. The time skip is gonna be hard and I, I watched, 
again, like, don't take all of this too seriously. Don't like do the math of like, well, this is if this is there, this is how old they are. Then this is how old these people are. It's The Sims. It's hard. If I could make them like look a little bit older in their life stage, because we don't have preteens. Uh, I know there's a preteen mod, but I don't think it works well for this. Well, I, maybe. Honestly, maybe. Maybe I'll have Zayori and Rin be teenagers. Maybe be a preteen, and then like Cambridge and Felix, they be preteens too. And then when after Zayori's story is done, then we'll see like Cambridge and all of them, Priya and them too as teenagers. Oh my goodness, they they grow up so fast. Now Sahar and Giselle, they're gonna know each other. I feel like they're just gonna start out by doing a lot of play dates, and then when Sahar and Giselle get older and become kids, then they'll talk about the troll thing. So yeah, I think I think that's good. Okay, so I know this episode was kind of short. It's really because we have such a big episode coming up. It is going to be our finale of season two, ending with Alice May's coronation, which is going to be so wild. But if you enjoyed this and you're excited for the coronation in the next episode, make sure to hit that like button. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you haven't checked out the Royal Regency series, go do that. It's so much fun. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.